So, right now I assume that this little thing is given. And given a heuristic function, I'll try to solve my algorithm. So it's a new algorithm. Let me, of course, I will have to take in an extremely small graph. I cannot even take toy problems. You can see the size of the board that I have. And therefore, let me make in an extremely, extremely small graph. And let's do a graph search over it. Uh, to make it more simple, I'll do a graph search rather than a tree search. So let's draw a graph first. The standard small graph that everybody draws. Uh, okay, let me innovate. Let me add in an edge. Let me put in some edge course right here. Everything is numbered, yes. So that's my small little graph. Now, of course, I said that I will assume the heuristic function is given and I will make good of my promise. So how did you get this? Don't care about it. Except for assume that this heuristic function is what is already given to you because of some calculations and because of some reasons. Okay, so... I hope I don't make a calculation mistake. So let's say that that's the actual heuristic function which has already been given to you by the person who was making that those guesses. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this graph over this heuristic function and that will be my A star algorithm. So I'll only draw the priority queue around over here. So of course we start from the source. The source is drawn inside. Luckily, you've got a source which is just a number. So I mentioned around over here. Now there are three values that I need to mention around over here. The G value of source from itself is zero. The H value of source is 11. And therefore, the total cost is zero plus 11, 11. F is equal to G plus H. F is what is the priority of my priority queue. Currently doesn't matter because zero is the only node which is into the priority queue and therefore let's expand zero by all the actions. So it's go to one and go to two. So that's one. And this one is what is a two. So I'll not write down the name of the actions. They are funny anyways. So it becomes zero plus two, which is a two. And this becomes zero plus eight, which is a eight. And of course, H of one is 10. So F becomes 10 plus two, which is a 12. And H of two is seven. So it becomes F is equal to 7 plus 8, which is uh, 15. So now my priority queue, priority queue is always the leaves. So this is my closed and this is my frontier. That's my priority queue. So out of 12 and 15, two items in my priority queue, which has the best priority, which is 1. So from one, I can undirect it, go to zero, two, four, or three. So I can go to zero, two, four, or three. So one zero is two, one two is three, one four is nine, and one three is four. And imagine, I mean, for obvious reasons, I am doing a graph search. I'm not doing a tree search. 
So if something is repeated, I will point that out and I will terminate repeated state. So zero is already enclosed. So I'll terminate it. Two, it becomes the FG value two plus the H cos three. So it becomes three plus two, five. So for two, G is equal to five. And I have H is equal to seven, which means F is equal to five plus seven, a uh, 12. And similarly for the others, so four, uh, it's two plus nine, 11 H of 4 is 4 and F is 15. So let's look at this as one as well. 2 plus 4. So G value is 3 plus 2, 5. Oops. It's 4 plus 2, 6. 4 plus 2, 6. H value of 3 is 6. And therefore, F value is a 12. Okay, uh, bad example, too many 12s already. So, now of course you've got two twos. Unlike this case, this two was in French. It wasn't frontier. It wasn't enclosed. So, of course, what I will do is I'll take the better of the two. This has a total cost of 15. This has a total cost of 12. So this one doesn't have the better cost. In the pseudocode that I gave the last time, which is also how many people implement that app, you cannot go inside and either delete this two or increase its priority so that it's doing exactly what it should do. So many people just let it be. It'll never be useful. It'll never contribute anything. So now, of course, my frontier has two, four and three and my closed is zero. So let's take out the next node. And after taking out the next node, we will do the rest of the processing. So there's a tie break. Hmm. Bad. Randomly choose anyone. I choose two. So from two, I can go to zero. Now I'll not even draw it up because I know that if I go to zero, it's already enclosed. It'll get terminated. From two, I can go to one. Now again, I'll not even put that up because I know it's enclosed. Zero is enclosed. One is enclosed. Otherwise, of course, I do encourage just write it down and ensure for yourself that it's not doing anything. But from two, of course, I can reach to four with the edge cost of five. So the G value becomes five plus five, which is a 10. H value of four is four. That means the F value is 10 plus four, 14. So, guess what? I've got four again. So, I've discovered four again. And which one is better? Luckily, it's an ideal case. It's pen and paper, so I can assume everything about the algorithm. So, a 10 or a 14 or a 15, a 14 is better. So, let's start this off. I got a better one. I'll keep the better one. Okay, can I go anywhere else from two? Absolutely no. So zero, one, and two are in my closed and four and three are the ones which are currently into my fringe. Okay, uh, it appears I normally take this also as an edge. So let's complicate it up a little bit. Okay, now let's start over from four. Uh, so next one, which one will be expanded? Is it the one which is a four with a 14 or a three with a 12? And it turns out a three with a 12 is a much better candidate. So it has a better cost. So let's expand that up from three. I can go to one. 
I'll not even write it down because one is already enclosed. From three, I can go to four. With a cost of three. And from three, I can go to five. With a cost of 10. So 10 plus 6, 16. H value is equal to 0. F value is 16 plus 0, 16. And 6 plus 3, G is equal to 9. H value is equal to 4. And F value is 9 plus 4, 13. So now that's interesting. I've already got the goal. By the way, this is the goal. Do I stop? No. Same as Dijkstra, same as Uniform Cost Search, you never stop when you insert goal into the system. You don't stop when you insert goal into your frontier, into your fringe. You stop when you extract it out. So even though I know it's a goal, I'll still continue. Maybe I get a better one. This again is repeated. I'll still take the better one. So out of 14 and 13, 13 one is better. So let's expand 4 because out of 16 and 13, 13 is a lower cost. So let's expand it. From 4, I can go to 2. It's already closed. I could go to 1. It's already closed over here. I could go to 3. <laughs> That's also closed. I could go to 5. Oops, 5 is not closed. So 9 plus 6, 15. H0, F is 15 plus 0, which is a 15. Is this 5 better? Is this 5 better? This 5 is better. Mm, what am I left with? 0 is closed, 1 is closed, 2 is closed, 3 is closed, 4 is closed. 5 is not closed. Let's extract out 5. And by the way, 5 is the goal. You do stop when you extract goal outside the fringe. So this time I will stop. I'm not even process it. I'm extracting the goal outside my fringe. And because I'm extracting goal outside my fringe, this time I will definitely stop. So that's what is the A star algorithm. Now, before I even comment upon anything else, go to the interesting heuristic stuff. Let's have a comment on the optimality. So is A star algorithm optimal? A clever way to look at it is in AI, whenever you put star in front of anything, it means it's optimal. So it has to be optimal. But how are the connotations? Are the criterions? Yes, that's exactly what I'll be talking about. So let's talk about optimality. Now, we talked about that there are two ways to implement these algorithm. One is as a tree search. And the other is as a graph search. A tree search where you only have a frontier, you don't have a closed, and you admit repeated states. A graph search where you have a closed and you have a frontier, something gets repeated, you say, nah, the second one is not going in. So, a uh, A star algorithm is optimal for a tree search if it has the admissibility property. So if the heuristic is admissible, it is optimal for a tree search. For a graph search, it needs to be admissible. However, along with admissible, it also needs to be consistent. So, of course, I will define these two terms, admissible and consistent, one after the other. A heuristic function is admissible if the heuristic estimates are always less than or equal to the optimal estimates the best estimates the best values for all states s all we say a heuristic function is admissible if it always underperforms if it always under quotes if it always tells lesser than the actual value so it's like optimistic how far is my home from here it's 750 meter 
I asked someone, how far is my home from here? Just 20 meters. Dude, you can see 20 meters. My house is not there. Just 25 meters. So always quote less. I'm playing this eight puzzle. How many more moves? Just two more moves. How come? Just two more moves. So always quote less. How far is my kitchen from my living room? Just two steps. <laughs> no, entrance is also not even two steps. So when you quote always less than the actual value, your heuristic function is called as admissible. So I cannot say a general function is admissible or not, but I can say is this function admissible or not. Uh, H star H of course is what is the optimal distance cost from S to goal. You can also say that the actual and by the way, you can never calculate H star S. Otherwise, calculating H star S is another search problem. So let's say whether this heuristic function is really admissible or not. And in order to do that, I will calculate the H star S value of all the nodes right here. So here we go. Let's do it quickly. Which, by the way, is also how I write the initial heuristic value. For the node 0, what is the optimal cost? So I think it came out anyways here to be a 15, but let's still calculate that up. It's 2 plus 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. So the cost from 0 to goal is a 15. Let's do it for one. What is the cost from one all the way up to goal five? It's four plus three plus six. Thirteen. What is the optimal cost from two to goal? Two to goal, it's five plus six. What is the optimal cost from 3 to goal? 3 to goal, it could either be this 10 or this 6 plus 3, which is a 9. What is the optimal cost from 4 to goal? 4 to goal, this is 6. What is the optimal cost from 5 to goal? So, of course, this is the goal and this is the source. So, it's 0. 11 is less than or equal to 15, 10 is less than or equal to 13, 7 is less than or equal to 11, 6 is less than or equal to 9, 4 is less than or equal to 6, 0 is less than or equal to 6. That means this heuristic function is consistent. And that means if I implement a tree search, which I did not, it would have generated the optimal results. You can see the result that I got, it was anyways optimal. So the result that I got was, of course, Five six four three one zero zero one three four five zero one three four five. It is optimal. It's optimal because my heuristic function was admissible, but then I did a graph search. I did not do a tree search, so I need to define and explain consistency. So a heuristic function is consistent if it obeys the triangle law of inequality. So let's say what is it? There is a edge from S to S dash with the action A cost C S A S dash. There is also a goal. I know an estimate here, which is H S dash. I also know an estimate here, which is H of S. In this triangle, S, S dash, goal, S, goal, sum of two sides needs to be greater than the third side. So, H of S dash, uh, oops, I made that wrong, long time ago. Let me just correct that up. It's H of S. 
So, h of s must be less than equal to c s a s dash plus h s dash for all s a s dash feasible actions. Okay, and this is what I say are uh, my formulas. So we looked at admissibility. Let's also look at consistency. Consistency says HS is less than or equal to CSA S dash plus H of S dash for all feasible action SA applied on the state S to produce S dash. So let's take the same little thing and see if the heuristic function is consistent or not. Now you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 18. I'm not going to do it for 18 edges. I'm going to do it for maximum of one edge. And let's look at just one edge and see whether that is consistent or not. So let's take S is equal to 0, 1. S is equal to 0. S dash is equal to 1. So we have h of s which is h of 0 is equal to 11 that is the LHS the RHS is CSAS dash plus HS dash so CSAS dash is the 0 1 weight which is 2 plus HS dash which is h value of 1 which is a 10 Hooray! This is more. It's consistent at least for this. Let, I mean, it's an undirected graph, so I could even check, check for the reverse edge. So, edge of 1 is 10, and see, SAS dash plus H of 0 is equal to, so again, 2 plus 11. Wonderful, 13 is more than 10. For one, I mean for two edges I've done, you do it for all of them. If it turns out to be consistent, I'm guaranteed optimality and you saw that the results were, in fact, to be honest, actually optimal. So maybe there's here's the reason why they actually turned out to be optimal. Uh, consistency is a stronger criterion as compared to admissibility. So every function, uh, every heuristic function which is consistent is admissible. However, every heuristic function which is admissible may or may not be consistent. And you can get it easily over here because all that you do have is the fact that the heuristic value of goal is exactly zero. Put this definition into consistency for all the nodes for which S dash is equal to goal. You will get the admissibility criterion for all the neighbors of goal. Use that recursively and inject for all the actions that get to the neighbors of goal. You'll get the admissibility property for their neighbors. So if a heuristic function is consistent, it is definitely admissible. If a heuristic function is admissible, it may or it may not be consistent and that's how it goes.